Now, we kind of half talked about the rear of this device, utilizing the likes of LAN ports there on the rear with the two 1GBE LAN. Hello and welcome back. And today we're gonna to do a hardware review of the DS620 Slim. Now, this is a device that I've talked about on the channel quite a few times in the past, mainly because of its name change. Originally, it was known as the DS619 Slim, but over the past year or so, it has changed into this new re-release version of the DS620 Slim, and finally, it is available for everyone to buy. So, what I wanna talk about today is predominantly hardware, but <clears throat> it would be remiss of me not to touch on the fact that, of course, software plays a big, big part. Although we're gonna do a full software review of this device in a number of ways, I don't want to focus just on the hardware with today's video. So, there's our retail box, there we go. This is the Synology DS620 Slim. It features a dual core J3355 CPU. That's the one, uh, sorry, the 2.0 gigahertz CPU. So it can be burst up to 2.5 gigahertz per core. That's a Celeron as well. And it's also supported by two gig of DDR3L memory. <clears throat> two gig that can be upgraded up to six gig officially. I know six gig seems a little weird, but they're saying that is the maximum available for this device. On top of that, the device supports everything from link aggregation via two LAN ports to six individual bays of two and a half inch media. So again, this is for people that want to buy a fantastically compact NAS device. Now, it's worth highlighting this device is also available from the guys at span.com for about 420 quid, give or take, and that's without the local tax in your region, so do bear that in mind. So if we look inside this box, what do we get? Well, we have a myriad of new accessories. What have we got? What are we going to play with? First, we've got our quick start installation guide. For those that don't know how to use an ads for the first time, congratulations, you're on the right YouTube channel. I've got loads of videos, but if you don't want to watch them, then there is a first time installation guide readily available. On top of that, we have our UK main sleeve. For you guys out there that want to purchase anywhere in the world, two things to bear in mind. One, make sure you get your right regional plug, very important. Two, if you order from the guys at Span, they will include the regional plug or try their very hardest to ensure the regional plug for your region. Definitely something to bear in mind there. Next, we have an external power brick. Now, this external power brick, again, is a 65 watt PSU. So because this device, although it's six bays, only uses two and a half inch media, we are talking stuff like SSDs and two and a half inch hard drive. So it doesn't require the enormous, the enormous PSU of a number of other devices. Yes, it's external, which you know is a deal breaker for some of you, but I like an external power brick, if I'm honest. It just makes things easier in the event of something going wrong. Next, we've got screws for two and a half inch hard drives uh, and SSDs, and of course, keys, because these are lockable trays too, something that we've never seen before in the Slim series. And in fact, before I go any further, it's worth highlighting this isn't the first Slim NAS that Synology have ever released. In fact, it's somewhere about maybe the fourth, fifth, maybe even the sixth. These are devices that are designed to be exceptionally compact and to be put away in places where space or power consumption, noise, dust, all things are very, very important. And this is designed to be somewhere very, very discreet indeed, very small. And again, I recommend people that need high output for their NAS at low power consumption, this could well be the one for you. If we have a look inside further, we have two LAN cables, because as mentioned, this device supports link aggregation, which is quite useful to a number of you out there that want to take advantage of heightened speeds with smart switches and more. But again, it is worth highlighting that if you are utilizing two and a half inch media such as SSDs, although SSDs are much, much faster, you are still only using two LAN connections. So that may be a bottleneck to a number of you out there. And if we go further, we can get into what is, let's be honest, the most important part of this box. We can talk about the NAS itself. Let's get rid of that box. There. Move the accessories to one side. So let's face it, this is what you want to look at the most. And have a good look at, without opening that while grabbing it, don't worry, the DS. 620 slim now again this is a fantastically compact device this is a six bay synology nas device that utilizes pretty much no not all but most of the synology dsm software dsm 6.2.2 currently with dsm 7.0 for the end of the year in beta from what i understand 
Now, the device itself has got six lockable bays. Each bay has an LED light, denoting system access, health, and more, as well as individual LEDs for system access generally, alerts in the event of problems or intrusions or failure of hardware, and LAN connection LEDs that tell us connectivity and activity on those individual LAN connections on the rear. If we look at one of these trays, pop that there, we can see that it is a plastic tray, and although it doesn't use the same click and load design of its larger disk station brethren, if we were to use an SSD such as the Seagate Ironwolf Pro, these Ironwolf Pro drives can be snapped in automatically using the little pinholes located inside the device. In fact, these trays only click on one side. The other screws do have to go on the other side, so there is an element of screwing drives in, even using two and a half inch media. But again, you may also notice that this seven mil drive isn't filling up that whole bay, and that's because this is designed for 15 millimeter height drives. These are the big, big two and a half inch media drives that go up to five TB currently. Pop that there. Now, Talking about SSDs, it is worth touching on an important point here. Now, I've mentioned this in other videos, but I do think it's worth highlighting this again. Many, many users um, who saw this device when it first came out were really looking forward to the idea of getting this compact little NAS, fully populating it with SSDs, and then getting some really hardcore speeds out of this device. But, as mentioned, this device only supports two LAN ports. It doesn't support 10 GBE, it doesn't support um, a PCIe upgrade card. There are no adapters that let you go above two gigabit ethernet overlink aggregation, which once you're looking at six bays of SSD is a phenomenal bottleneck. That CPU would be able to get via link aggregation some great speeds, as well as supporting 10 GBE to a fantastic level. So the idea you're missing out on that may be very, very disappointing. So when I spoke to Synology um, in different regions and different countries about this, they all gave me the same answer. This device is designed to have four two and a half inch hard drives installed. So maybe five TB drives, so 20 terabytes of raw storage, maybe in a RAID 5, and then two SSDs. These SSDs was, would act as read-write caching, and therefore vastly improve the performance of traditionally slower mechanical hard drives and still giving you the storage benefits that they would incur up to 5 TB. However, that still creates that enormous external bottleneck. So don't get me wrong, it's great that we can have vastly improved speeds internally, either with a pure SSD storage uh, area or a combination storage of hard drives and SSD using caching. It's still a little disappointing that we've got that external bottleneck. Now, I use words like disappointment, that's not really fair. At the same time, you've got um, such warranted advantages as BTRFS inside, you have got um, Synology's hybrid RAID system inside, support of the majority of Synology's key business and home applications, 25 cameras via the likes of Surveillance Station, as well as um, uh, other uh, Synology Moments, Synology Drive, Synology Photo Station, Synology Video Station, Plex Media Server, a whole host of great applications readily available now. In fact, one of my biggest surprises that I've already touched on in another video is the fact that this device also supports Synology's Virtual Machine Manager. This dual core NAS supports Virtual Machine Manager. Two licenses, oh sorry, two VMs is recommended the maximum, and it even arrives with one VM license included. So some great support for some home and indeed pretty mid-range business applications on this too. The read and write speeds, of course, externally will limit you around 200 megabytes per second because of those two LAN ports. But with a VM internally using SSDs or cached storage, as well as some of the AI supported apps that you can now get for the likes of Docker in container form, it still makes it a very interesting proposal indeed. Now, we kind of half talked about the rear of this device, utilizing the likes of LAN ports there on the rear with the two 1GBE LAN. There's also USB ports, these USB ports supporting things like UPSs, wireless dongles, and other USB supported devices, but not a great deal more than that. They are predominantly used for storage, and of course with USB backups and more being supported on it, that's a good thing too. Now, 
For those of you out there that are looking for a fantastically compact NAS solution, you really will you know, find it hard to find a better solution than this at this price level. There are small expensive NASs out there, some with 10 GBE, some of them with better CPUs, but all of them arriving at almost double the price of this device means it's definitely worthy of thought. Nevertheless, this has been the DS620 Slim hardware review. We're going to be going through this device in a number of ways. I am looking forward to testing out their idea of virtual machine on virtual machine use on this device. As you can see, it's SATA based inside, and it doesn't utilize those memory bays inside. But I will be doing a lot more research on this device, and of course putting it all here on YouTube for you guys. If you've got any questions about this device, I'm gonna have it with me for a couple of weeks so I can you know, do all the testing you guys need. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you found this useful, then don't forget to click like and subscribe. And do check out below both the link to span.com to get hold of your first NAS or your second or your 10th NAS because they're the experts. Alternatively, read the NAS Compare review below that gives you more information about this device. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.